Hello and welcome. In this video, we're going to talk about logistic regression. Logistic regression and linear regression together form the very strong foundation of any predictive modeling endeavor. This video is meant for beginners. Therefore, we'll be talking about logistic regression right from the scratch. Watch this video till the end. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to our channel so that you continue to receive updates and share it with all those who might benefit. Let's get started. Here's something we are already familiar with, a simple linear regression case. Where we try to draw a line in such a way that it best represents the points on the xy plane. This line is derived based on the concept of ordinary least squares. And the output that we get is always in the form of a value. But the nature of problems that we solve in analytics might be different from just predicting a value. For example, here, we might be required to do a classification, that is, find out a mechanism to clearly separate between the green and the red dots. Here, if you see, we are trying to predict the probability. So let's say we find out a probability, a threshold, beyond which all the values will be classified as green and below which all the values will be classified as red. Now, if you notice, there might be a bit of misclassification and at times there might be borderline areas. But again, the idea of any analytics endeavor is never to be 100% accurate. It tries to be better than random with a sufficient degree of accuracy. So summing up, we are not trying to draw a line to represent the points here. We are trying to draw a line which acts as a separator between the greens and the reds, between the pass versus fail, between a default versus a non-default. Could be any number of examples. Let's understand what are the limitations of linear regression. We all have seen multiple linear regression. It is simply an extension of the simple linear regression where you have more than one x. But we can't use the same equation to predict the probability as required in the case of classification because number one, the probability always lies between zero and one. And in this case of linear regression, we never had such restriction. Given a combination of x's and the coefficients that we calculate, we can get any value of y. It will not necessarily be limited between zero and one as it is required in the case of probabilities. Secondly, the probability doesn't vary linearly. What does it mean? Let's take an example. The probability of achieving 10% improvement in exams. So when we talk about improvement, I'm sure there must be a baseline in mind. Let's say the first scenario is that your current score is 55%. And the second scenario is that your current score is 85%. Now you realize if you're talking about the same exam, a person sitting at a 55% score has a larger room for improvement. But a student B, who's already doing excellent in the exams, sitting at an 85%, for him to do another 10% would require a lot more effort, and the probability would always be less compared to the case A. So the probabilities don't vary linearly. Take some time to absorb this concept. Therefore, we need a link function that helps us overcome these two limitations of linear regression. And the solution comes in the form of a logit function, as you can see on the left-hand side in the first equation where p is the desired probability that we are trying to estimate, and one minus p is the complementary event, probability of success divided by the probability of failure, you can say. So if we solve for it, we get the value of probability as e raised to the power of y hat divided by one plus e raised to the power of y hat. This is nothing but the sigmoid function. This ensures that the two limitations of the linear regression have been overcome, and we can test it. Let's just see how it looks like. So here, We've just taken random values of y from negative 100 to plus 100 and correspondingly generated the probabilities using the sigmoid function. Here is what we get. Now, if you see, this has been capped between zero and one. So if we were to separate the greens and reds, this might be able to do the job with the right probability. And of course, we don't think a straight line does justice in this case to represent this function. In fact, if you see, we don't have too many points out there which would be anywhere close to the straight line. In fact, a curve like this might be a better fit. So if you see, this is more like an S-shaped curve that we get, which is nothing but the sigmoid function. This takes care of the two limitations of linear regression. The calculated value lies between zero and one, and it does not follow a linear relationship. Let's just look at some use cases of logistic regression. It's one of my personal favorites, and I always talk about it because I believe this is a classic example of how analytics can actually save lives. Since 1948, the Framingham Heart Study has been committed to identifying the common factors 
or characteristics that contribute to cardiovascular disease. Over the years, careful monitoring of the Framingham study population has led to the identification of major cardiovascular disease risk factors, as well as valuable information on the effects of these factors, such as blood pressure, blood triglyceride, and cholesterol levels, age, gender, and psychosocial issues. So a lot of what comes to us as common sense today is an output of this study, and it deserves the due credit. For example, today everybody knows that it's bad to have high blood pressure, but in order to be able to say that something is high or something is low, you needed a threshold, you need a number. Those numbers and many such numbers are the outputs of this study. So as an output of the study, researchers are able to generate a 10-year Framingham risk score, which enables an individual to know if he is prone to a cardiovascular disease 10 years in advance. Now imagine how helpful this can be for a person who gets to know that 10 years down the line, he is likely to acquire a cardiovascular disease. If he knows that today, he can definitely take preventive measures by controlling the diet, by putting himself on adequate medication. Whereas in the absence of such studies, these things could have been found at the last moment when you are already suffering from a problem. And then there is very little that you can do to control it. Let's understand how this was studied in quantitative terms. Of course, it required collecting a lot of data. That was about the demographic variables, such as gender, age in years, and education of a person. Behavioral factors, such as whether the person is a smoker or not, and if he's a smoker, how many cigarettes per day? Medical history, is the person already on blood pressure medication? Any prevalent stroke? Any prevalent hypertension? Diabetes? In addition, there were tests performed at the time of admission to the research, such as the total cholesterol level, blood pressure, body mass index, heart rate, and glucose. Framingham Heart Study still continues. And at present, they're studying the third generation of the individuals who participated in the pilot study. It's interesting to note that since 1950, the age-adjusted death rates due to coronary heart disease have declined by 60%. It's a great achievement. Let's now take a closer look. So we start by forming a focus group of people who choose to participate in the study. For each of those individuals who participate in the study, we capture all the variables that we suspect could potentially impact the probability of acquiring a cardiovascular disease over the years. Now, the people who participate in these studies, we continue to observe them. And that's how we get the last column of this data set, which is where we conclude whether the person actually acquired a cardiovascular disease or not. So now with the help of this, we have prepared something called as a model. And now when we get these attributes for a new person, that is for a person whom the model has not really evaluated in the past, we pass these attributes through the model. Finally, if the probability estimated by the model is greater than the threshold, we will say that it's a case of potential risk in a 10 years time frame. And if the probability is less than the threshold, we will declare it as no risk. Over a period of time, in order to evaluate whether the model is doing good or not, we will have to validate it against the actual observations. And how do we do that? We simply map the predicted observations with the actual observations. So if it was a case of risk and the model also predicted it as a risk, or if it was a case of no risk and the model also predicted it as no risk, we get a green, that is a match. But if there are cases where there is a mismatch between the actual versus predicted and contributes to the inaccuracy of the model. So here we come to an end of this video, which gives an overview of logistic regression. We try to explain everything in very simple and easy to understand terms. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. And please don't forget to share it with all those who might benefit. Thank you for watching.